Hello YouTube! It's been a moment since I have made a video, but I am back because I have this amazing thing to unbox and swatch with you all. So I have here, as you can see, the 24 color set of the Holbein Artist Watercolors Collection. And this is a set that I have had my eyes on for a while and wanted for a long time. Um, but recently, Holbein watercolors have gotten very, very expensive. And this year, I've been on a low buy because uh, I have lots of art supplies. Um, <laughs> but this is a set that I really, really wanted. Um, but they were just so unaffordable for me. Um, they, they used to be affordable. And I think the 18 set is still pretty affordable, as is the 12 um, still around like twenty thirty dollars, but anything over that, and it's outrageous. Um, this set right now, this Holbein watercolor set, the twenty four count is um, on Dick Blick for a hundred and eleven dollars, y'all. And at St. Louis Art Supply, it's a hundred and twenty nine dollars. I last night um, I'd been watching this on Amazon for the longest time, and it was fifty six percent off. Um, I have a link down below. It is an affiliate link. I purchased this set for $39.95. It came the next day and here it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous and they have a few left and there's the price. So let's, let's dig into this and see. Oh, y'all, I've wanted this set for so long, so long. Um, and this one in particular, uh, because it has um, some specific colors, which I'll go through. I'm going to swatch them with you today. Um, but, but here's the set, and I'll be back in, in a second to start swatching it. Okay, so I've got my swatch sheet all set up. Thank you so much for joining me for this video, by the way. Um, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. I promise more will come. Um, but right now I have the Holbein watercolors. Um, I have a, a set up a swatch sheet um, because they are so expensive and tiny little tubes. These are five milliliter tubes. Um, so they are tiny. Um, because they are so tiny, um, I put them out on a swatch sheet, just like little dots to swatch for a couple of reasons. Um, I want them to dry a little bit so we can see how they re-wet. And I want to swatch them right away because I can't wait. And um, also, I'm not quite ready to set up um, a palette because there are some other colors that I want to add um, before I set up my palette. So, um, yeah, let's get swatching and um, yeah, I'll share my thoughts with you. So I am swatching um, on Canson watercolor paper. I've got two things of uh, water here and um, off to the side. And I'm using, I'm gonna swatch with a flat brush um, today, a Princeton flat synthetic. That's what I'll be using. All right. So um, when I was preparing the swatch card, I listed the name of each color, the pigments, and its light fastness, and the series. So Holbein paints, Holbein watercolor paints are Japanese paints. And um, they're vegan. They don't have any ox skull. Wow. Um, they don't have any ox skull in them. So they're, uh, they, they shouldn't flow or they're, they say, they say um, that these watercolors don't flow like the way core would, for instance. Um, so they're a Japanese watercolor and they're vegan. That Crimson Lake is PR 177, 122, and PV 19 with a light fast rating of three. And it's also a series A pigment. So 
Um, watercolors uh, usually come in different series um, a, through whatever. And with Holbein and their line, um, Series A pigments are the cheapest and then, uh, or least expensive pigments maybe I should say. And uh, series like C, D, E, F, will be uh, more expensive because the pigments are usually more rare. So this is um, Rose Matter, PR83. And Rose Matter, it has a light fast rating of two. And it's one of my favorite pigments. And it's absolutely beautiful. Um, that Crimson Lake, I must say, is, is gorgeous. And Holbein watercolors are also known to be incredibly vibrant. So this set I wanted in particular for this color I'm about to swatch right here. This is um, vermilion hue. I'm sorry, it's like giving a glare. Let me adjust my lighting. This is not good. Well, I think it's just going to glare. I'm sorry about that, y'all. So anyway, um, the reason why I really wanted this um, set in particular was because it came with vermilion hue. And vermilion is one of my favorite colors. It is my favorite color, I have to say. It is my favorite color. I'm going to just claim it. Vermilion is my favorite color. Now, this is vermilion hue. It's P073, um, PR254, and PY110. And it is gorgeous and stunning. Um, actual vermilion, they, they have an actual vermilion. And it's very expensive. I think it's like $25 or $27 or something for a 15 milliliter tube. So these, like I said, are five milliliters. And um, so they're tiny tubes. And even the, the set on Blick it, are five milliliter tubes that they're selling. 24 set of five milliliter tubes on Blick for $111. Like what? So... Um, and yeah, I want to add a couple more tubes to this, um, some colors. And they're like, the ones I'm looking at are like $12 to $17 um, for a 15 milliliter tube and like $10 to $12 for a 5 milliliter tube. So I don't know what's happened with Holbein paints, but my heavens. So that was Jean Brilliant number two, PO20 and PW6 with a light fast rating of three. And that was another Series A. So most of these paints, tubes, or colors, whatever, pigments that come, they're Series A. So they're the least expensive of all. So, I mean, for this set, you know, um, 24 for, you know, $40. Um, that's like, what, a, a, a dollar sixty-seven a tube or something? That I can see. But, oh my gosh, $111 or $129? Um, so that was Permanent Yellow Ye Lemon, uh, PY3, and 74 with a light fast rating of 2. I actually really like that. Um, it's nice and transparent. And a lot of times, um, like the, the cobalt lemons, they're... Um, you know, cobalt yellows, they're kind of opaque, and I don't really appreciate that. Um, this one is permanent yellow deep. In fact, one of the ones, uh, two, uh, Holbein tubes I want to add is the um, the one that I can't pronounce, the Oreo, Oreolin, um, that yellow that's supposed to be really transparent. I think it's, um, I think it might be an Azo yellow, which I have an M-gram and I love. All right, so this one's permanent yellow deep. Uh, PY74, PY83, um, light fast rating of two. And again, another series A. Hmm, these are really pretty. Um, all right, now we've got uh, yellow ochre. Always nice to have in a set. I also uh, really liked this 24 set because there were a couple of colors in it that I were unusual, don't usually come in a set. And I thought it, this was a really nice complete set. The other one I would have really liked to get is the 48 set, but that was out of my price range. So, um, so yellow ochre is PY42. This is a pretty one. Um, this is, of course, a light fast rating of uh, four and a series A. 
uh, yellow ochre is an inexpensive pigment. I do prefer uh, a raw umber to a yellow ochre, but I mean, I'll take this. This isn't bad because this one isn't chalky. At least at first glance to me. All right, the next one I was really excited about in this set, yellow gray. It's PY42, PBK6, and PW6 with a light fast rating of three. So I have, I think, two tubes of Holbein watercolor. I have shell pink and I think Davies gray. And I have, though, a lot of Holbein gouache, both regular gouache and acrylic gouache. And this yellow gray is, um, oh, what's it called? Here, ash, ash yellow. It's ash yellow. And so if you're familiar with the ash yellow in the Holbein uh, acrylic gouache, uh, that's what this is in a watercolor. And I thought, oh, how exciting. So um, I, I love Holbein's traditional gouache. I actually prefer the Turner ac acryl gouache um, over the Holbein acryl gouache, but <clears throat> I do have a good amount of the Holbein. And, and this is really nice um, to be able to combine, or at least I was thinking it'd be really nice to be able to combine my um, Holbein watercolors with, you know, Holbein gouache that I already have. Um, so, and I've tried to use like my gouache as a watercolor and you can make them kind of transparent, but they, it just milled differently. And so they don't behave the same way. Um, this is cobalt green. Now this is one of the um, more expensive pigments because it's a cobalt. It's, um, but it also has some PW6 in it. So it's PG18, PB28, and PW6. It has a light fast rating of three and it's a series D. So it would be a more expensive tube, but um, you know, again, it's got multiple pigments here. Now I've heard, um, you know, when I was doing my research for this on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, um, to see, you know, what others had to say about things. Uh, a lot of the comments that I heard uh, others, artists saying was that <clears throat> their complaints were that there were uh, multiple pigments. There weren't a lot of single pigment colors here and there. Yeah, they're not. They're, there are a lot of convenience colors and I'll have to paint with them for a little bit to see how they mix. Um, but, ooh, that's pretty. I really wanted uh, the permanent green number one in... Um, in this as well and these are super bright they're absolutely gorgeous and as they dry they are really looking lovely so next up is permanent green number two which would be um, PY 74 53 and then PG 7 again another series a with a light fast rating of two to see if they yeah see they I mean I they move more than I thought they would to be honest with you um but yeah see they're not going to flow um as much as uh, other paints might which is a you know it could be a good thing and bad thing depending on your style of painting all right um, am I still in shot? Okay, here we go. Uh, Terra Vert is next. This is a PG 23 17 with a light fast rating of four. Again, another series A, but, um, I have this recently. I acquired this uh -huh. last year. Recently I acquired this, um, ooh, too much water in, um, in their gouache and I absolutely love it. And a little bit goes such a long way. Um, I'm seeing that is true with their watercolors here, um, as well as with their gouache. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, 
like I said, I've had their <clears throat> Turbert Gouache for, I mean, gosh, maybe yeah, around a year and a half now. And so, yeah, I use it often. You wouldn't know. Like, a little bit goes a long way. I just absolutely, I don't know if that's coming up on camera with the light. It's too much light. It's coming up. Hopefully you can see it. It's beautiful. Okay, so I have a little of the, the Terravert on my brush. Isn't that so pretty? I'm going to see if it's milled differently. They say that. But let's see. All right, on to the next. Okay, here we go. Got distracted. Um, Viridian Hue. Another Series A. A Bite Fast rating of 3. PG7. I like having this in my palette. Um, it's I find it to be a very useful mixing color. And it's fairly light fast. Uh, so it's reliable to me. Um, yeah, I like having Viridian on my palette. That's what I mean. Like, I really, I like the way they put together this palette. Um, Compost bl Blue, PB15 and PW6, uh, Light Fast Rating of 2, Series A. So, oh, probably I'm shaking this more than I need to. I'm sorry. So, do I think that this set is worth so pretty. Um, $130? I don't know. For five milliliter tubes of paint. But it's definitely worth the, the you know, a, a dollar and a half a tube of paint, I think. Um, Cerulean PB35. Uh, this is a Series D. Cerulean is a, an expensive pigment. It's got a light fast graining of four so I really appreciate that they uh, included Cerulean. Uh, it's so nice for so many purposes, including skies. Um, yeah. I think this is a really thoughtfully put together set and it's got some reliable colors, some different colors that, you know, I don't see in your, you know, I don't know. I have a lot of different brands of watercolor and the sets are sometimes a little bit too similar between the brands. And so I appreciate when, you know, their brands offer something a little bit different. Um, so I'm not mad about like all the series A's and stuff like that. I think this is a gorgeous set and these paints are just stunning. Um, they're Some of them are granulating just beautifully as they, they dry. I am so impressed and I can see why people really love the Holbein watercolors. Um, so that was Cobalt Blue Hue, um, PB29 and 15 and I really appreciate that they've included um, an ultramarine deep. I think these are really nice. Um, here's like, these are nice um, mixing blues. Um, and this is like a nice sky blue. And ultramarine deep is just nice to have on your palette. Uh, it's a good standard. Again, some different colors, but then some good standby colors. Um, reliable ones. Oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. It's definitely leaning um, red. It's definitely leaning warm. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. Um, then we've got uh, Prussian down here, which is a light fast rating of two series A, um, PB 27. And That's nice. Again, I, I appreciate, oops, sorry for the shake. I appreciate um, Prussian blue. Uh, it's not the most light fast, but it's a great mixing color and even on its own sometimes. Um, I appreciate it. It's one that I include on my palette um, often. Do 
usually. Okay, the next one is another one I was really excited to try. Um, Mineral Violet is PB29, PR122, and PBR25. It's a Series B, so a little bit more expensive of a pigment, huh? And, um, oh, yes, 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 does not disappoint. Oh my gosh, yes. And that's what I mean, like this is why I really held out for this palette rather than the 18 uh, set or the 12 set. Um, and I just kept watching the 24 set because this one has colors in it that like this, it, just the other ones didn't have. Um, all right, light red is next, PR 101. Light fast rating of, oh, I forgot. To, these are all Series A, though. I can tell you I forgot to write them down, but I know that they are all Series A. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Oh, that's really beautiful. It's um very orange-leaning, and I love it. I mean, well, vermilion is my favorite color, but oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so excited, y'all. All right, Burnt Sienna, PBR7. Uh, light Fast Rating of 4. Again, a great standard. Mm. Oh, this one's pretty. This one's pretty, y'all. Okay. Oh, I'm so happy that I had this set. I'm just, I was just looking at the dry down of that Terra Vert. We'll revisit it in a minute. Um, Burnt Umber. PBR7. And they're re-wetting, like, beautifully. They're, they're, um, they're still a little damp, but they're, they've dried down those little dots. Um, wow. That Burnt Umber is gorgeous to me. Um, sometimes burnt umber can look a little, um, I don't know what's the word, burnt, <laughs> I don't know, um, but, uh, this is a pretty brown, it almost reminds me of like a Mars brown, again, like, so thoughtful, this palette, I think. Finally, we have Ivory Black. And, oh, mess that up. <clears throat> Look, it just wipes right up. All right. Um, finally, there's Ivory Black. I gotta stop that. Finally, there's Ivory Black. And... This is PBK9. Um, I, I'm not mad. They do include also a Chinese white, which I didn't, I didn't swatch here because it's, you know, Chinese white. And if you don't know, Chinese white um, is different than titanium white. Chinese white is uh, PW4. And it's a mixing white. Um, titanium white's really opaque. And uh, PW4, ti um, titanium white is PW6. Uh, Chinese white, PW4, is um, not as opaque. And I heard, I think it was Lindsay, the frugal crafter, say that um, when companies use... PW4 in their um, paints, they don't have to list it as a pigment. So, I mean, for demonstration, maybe. Oh, no, this is PW5. Their Chinese white is PW5. So, let's see. Let's see what it's about.
And again, I'm not mad about this. I appreciate a Chinese white. It has its purpose and um, yeah, it, it's a nice way to um, mix or um, lighten a color without, oh, see, okay. Okay, like, y'all, that's so pretty. That's really nice. This is a nice, nice addition to this palette. All right, I'm gonna let these dry for a second and then I'll I'll come back with my final thoughts, but I, I can pretty much guarantee they're gonna be awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna let this dry down and then we'll come back and take a closer look. Okay, so we are all dry here and I am floored. Um, these are absolutely stunning. I honestly don't know why more people aren't talking about these or using them. Um, they're really pretty. Maybe because of the outrageous price. I don't know. Let me know down below what you think. Um, the granulation in some of these is just stunning. Look at that cerulean. Sorry, that's my dog eating <laughs> um, so I um, there's that yellow gray and I put a swatch of the ash yellow next to it so you can I can to hopefully see so the paint is still wet, but you can see the swatch, it's, it's the same color. The cobalt green um, is really beautiful. And they're all stunning. And this is on very cheap Canson XL watercolor paper. Now here's the um, TerraVert watercolor next to the TerraVert gouache. So I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell the difference in the granulation. Um, it looks to me like the watercolor is definitely, definitely um, more finely milled. I don't know, maybe it's just I'm seeing what I want to see. Let me know about, down below what you see. Um, Here's the yellows, um, Jean Brilliant, the vermilion hue. There hasn't been much color shift at all uh, during the dry time, which I'm super impressed with. Just, oh, I can't. I'm in love, y'all, I'm in love. And I haven't even painted with them yet. So, um, yeah, please subscribe. And thank you for watching. And thank you for staying with. And, um, yeah, I will definitely um, paint with these. And I will record it and upload it uh, very soon. Thank you all for sticking with me and um, enjoying this. And let me know if you've tried the Holbein watercolors and what you think of them. And, yeah, what you think of the price. Um, if you use their other products. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining me today. Um, see you soon, everybody. Bye.